Hello everyone. I am sitting here on a Friday night. It's 10 p.m. and it's raining outside and it's like the perfect weather to cozy up with a book. I mean it is 10 p.m. so I'll probably fall asleep in like 30 minutes but I'm like sitting here and I just finished reading a comic and I'm like what am I gonna read next because I really want to pick up a book and the only book I have left well not the only book uh, the book I have basically next to read is Anna Karenina. If you watched my um, like reading goals for the last quarter video, you know I had a stack of books that were all basically books that I acquired before January 1st, 2021. And my goal before the end of the year for this quarter was to read all of those books before entering into 2022. And I've basically accomplished that. I have one more comic that I need to read which I could read tonight, or at least start tonight, but I'm just like, mm, I'm not, I just read a comic, I want to read another comic. And I'm like, what if I just started Anna Karenina tonight? Just skipped ahead a little bit, got started. All I have left is a comic. I can read the comic when I'm not in the mood for Anna Karenina. And let's go. And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, maybe I can try to do a reading vlog. If you're seeing this, it worked out, but <laughs> I, I've never really done a proper reading vlog before so we'll see how it goes but yeah I made like sort of a month-long reading plan for Anna Karenina which seems reasonable and then I made like a two-week reading plan for Anna Karenina it like I said it's December 10th so I have about three weeks to finish this book and I feel like I can do it I've been reading a lot lately because it's like cold out and I won't go anywhere and I have like you know a couple days off for the holidays not a lot but a couple so I'm like why not why not give it a try so I'm gonna start tonight the physical edition that I have is the Pev Pevar Pevier the P and V version never I don't know how to say their names this is the physical copy that I have um, I have an audiobook edition of it, which I think is read by Maggie Gyllenhaal. I bought it on Audible a really, really long time ago. I was like, oh, that might be nice, even though I'm pretty sure it's going to be a different edition or a like, different translation. That's what I'm trying to say. Not, translation, not edition. Although I guess there are editions too. Um, and then I have like one of the free ebook copies of it on my Kindle as a way to like read it when I'm like out and about. Not that I'm really going out and about very much anymore. Yeah, that was like a really long way of saying I'm like properly prepared to tackle Anna Karenina. And I'm kind of excited. If you haven't been on my channel for a while or you haven't been subscribed for a while, you might not know this, but like a couple of years ago, I started a project where I would tackle one big book every single year. It was partially inspired by the fact that like when I was in college, I would try to do this or I did this one summer with The Count of Monte Cristo and it was great because I didn't have time to read these like really big books during the school year because school and so I was like hey I really want to read The Count of Monte Cristo but the edition I have is like 1300 pages let me read this in over the summer so I think it took me the entire summer to read uh, The Count of Monte Cristo and I brought that over to my booktube channel and like every August I started doing these big read-alongs so I did Moby Dick, Middle March, I did War and Peace, which actually took me two months. And yeah, they've been fun. And I was like, you know, it might be nice to do a reading vlog because I know this is going to take me a little bit of time. So yeah, I'm getting started. Let's do this. Hello. Uh, it is Monday, December 13th. I was literally just looking over at my computer to look at the day and date because whoever knows what date and date it is anymore. So I thought I would do a little bit of an update on the Anna Karenina situation. So I recorded that first clip on Friday and then Saturday I also read nothing because I was busy uh, and then <laughs> Sunday was finally the day where I picked up Anna Karenina and the main reason why I picked up the book is because I got my booster shot on Saturday. That's one of the things I did and so Sunday I felt terrible and so I was just like laying in bed basically the entire day and I was like you know what I slept for a lot of it but for the portions where I was awake but didn't quite have enough energy to like get up and do stuff I was like you know what I'm gonna listen to the audiobook of Anna Karenina. I bought this years ago 
knowing that one day I would eventually want to read Anna Karenina. And so I was like, you know what? Maggie Gyllenhaal is narrating this. Might as well get started. So yeah, I listened to the first eight chapters of part one and I'm enjoying it so far. I am enjoying the audiobook experience. I think Manny Maggie Gyllenhaal is doing a pretty good job of narrating it. Um, I am only listening to it at 1.15 speed, so slightly faster than one to make it feel like I am making a little bit better progress. But I'm not going to listen to it too quickly at least right now because i do want to actually ingest the information well and with this being a classic and with it being like a russian novel with names that or characters that have like multiple names and things like that assuming that that happens in here because it happens with a lot of russian novels and stuff like that i want to like take my time with it and actually make sure i'm ingesting the information that's occurring because at least for me personally one of the reasons why i don't do audiobooks a lot of times especially for fiction is that i have a, a harder time processing information that comes in audibly versus like reading it so yeah that's my update. It's supposed to be a really nice week weather-wise here. So I'm definitely going to be going for walks during my lunch break. So that will also help with me making progress. So my goal is to try to get through around two hours of an audiobook a day. Because right now we are getting close to it being around like two weeks left in the month, like it's the 13th. So there's a little bit more than two weeks left in the month. And right now the audiobook says that at 1.15 speed, uh, I have about 30 hours left in the audiobook. So I'm like, if I listen to two hours, if I get that down, two hours every single day then i will be on my way so we'll see what happens but i just wanted to provide that update also the beginning so far seems interesting it gets started with a bang i was not expecting that i was expecting a lot more setup to the book but no it just jumps right in with a husband cheating on his wife so <laughs> there you go hello um so i was listening to audiobook during my lunch break and I just thought I would share one thing that I found really amusing personally. The chapter that I recently finished was chapter 12 in part one and the older princess is talking about her daughter Kitty and she's like worried about her getting married because Kitty has recently come out into society and is now eligible I suppose is the terminology uh, but just like the way that the older princess talks about dating in their modern times just made me laugh because if feels very much like conversations that people of my generation who are maybe Indian or similar ethnic backgrounds would potentially have with their parents. I'm just gonna read a section of it and I don't know maybe I'm the only one who will find this amusing but I definitely found this amusing. It said, she saw that girls of Kitty's age formed some sort of groups, attended some sort of courses, freely associated with men, drove around by themselves. Many no longer curtsied and worse still, they were all firmly convinced that choosing a husband was their own and not their parents' business. Nowadays, girls are not given in marriage as they used to be. All these young girls and even all the old people thought and said. But how a girl was to be given in marriage nowadays, the princess could not find out from anyone. The French custom for the parents to decide the children's fate was not accepted and was even condemned. The English custom giving the girl complete freedom was also not accepted and was impossible in Russian society. The Russian custom of matchmaking was regarded as something outrageous and laughed at by everyone, the princess included. But how a girl was to get married or be given in marriage, no one knew. Everyone with whom the princess happened to discuss it told her one and the same thing. Good gracious, in our day, it's time to abandon this antiquity. It's young people who get married and not their parents. That means the young people should be left to arrange it as they can. It was fine for those who had no daughters to talk that way, but the princess understood that in making friends, her daughter might fall in love and fall in love with someone who would not want to marry or who was not right as a husband. And however much the princess was assured that in our time, young people themselves must settle their fate, she was unable to believe it, as she would have been unable to believe that in anyone's time, the best toys for five-year-old children would be loaded pistols. And therefore, the princess worried more about Kitty than she had about her older daughters. It just feels a little bit too real still. <laughs> this book written in, what, the late 1800s? 
it's still quite relevant. I also feel the same way when it comes to like Jane Austen novels. Like I remember very distinctly when I read Jane Austen for the first time, it was Pride and Prejudice my sophomore year of high school. And my other friend who was also Indian basically said something like, oh, the way this is basically like a Bollywood film. Like the way they talk about dating and marriage and all that stuff wasn't super uncommon. <laughs> so yeah, that was my little chuckle to myself moment while listening to Anna Karenina during my lunch break. And I just thought I would share. Hello. It is Tuesday, December 14th. Once again, checking my computer to see what's happening. Um, <laughs> that's, I think that's going to be a running theme in this vlog. Me just not knowing what day slash date it is. So I'm going to always look over at my computer to see what it's, what's going on. I just finished part one or like section one of Anna Karenina. If you haven't read it or don't know anything about it in terms of like the way the English translation is set up, I don't know if like other translation slash the original Russian is like this, but there's eight parts and like chapters within each part. So I just finished part one. And one thing that I always do with classic books is I actually read the Sparknow summaries. I specifically read them after finishing reading the book itself just to make sure I'm fully comprehending everything that's going on. But I did miss a couple of things in regards to certain people being related to each other but I feel like in general I need to make like a character map. Like I know there's like a character list at the beginning of the book. Here. List of principal characters. I don't know this this feels more confusing to me just because they have like their long official titles and names and then like their little nicknames and like I don't, I don't know, something about the formatting of this just doesn't work for me. I need like a proper tree of people who are connected. But so far, I'm enjoying it. I think it's really interesting that Anna Karenina doesn't show up for quite a few chapters. But I'm assuming <laughs> that she and Vronsky are the ones who are going to end up together since they're the ones with chemistry in the first part. So it'll be interesting to see how that all goes down. I think I said before that I don't know anything about Anna Karenina really in terms of plot. I knew it had something to do with like a relationship that was like forbidden so like some sort of affair sort of situation but I didn't realize she was going to be the one who would be married. So I feel like that makes it a little bit more interesting. So yeah I uh, have some laundry to do like I need to fold some clothes, I wash my sheets, um, there's a mess behind me that I'm very strategically blocking. <laughs> yeah I have like packages behind me of like Christmas presents and things like that and so I kind of want to like organize my room, clean up a little bit and I figured why not listen to the audiobook while doing so. So I'm going to do that and hopefully make some decent progress tonight. Hello. Do you like all the crap behind me? Enjoy. This is the joys of uh, buying stuff online and <laughs> waiting till Christmas to like wrap stuff and all that. So it is Friday, December 17th. Um, I am officially now dog sitting. So Parker is over there. Oh, that cute little puppy. He's the best. So I'm hoping that with Parker, I'll be able to make a decent amount of progress on Anna Karenina. We've already gone for a walk for the day and I got through like maybe three chapters? Three or four chapters I feel like. So that's good progress. I'm almost at the end of part two which is a little bit behind this unofficial schedule that I have. I think I'll be able to make up good progress this weekend while I was walking with Parker. Um, I basically got to the part where this is gonna be spoilers by the way. I'll put a spoiler tag over here so if you don't want to hear anything about the actual plot of Anna Karenina skip ahead. But I basically got to the point where Anna tells her husband that she hates him and she was basically like I hate you and I don't want to look at your face and I was just like oh this is, I didn't expect that to go down as early in the book as it is. Like that was, that was wild. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very intrigued to see sort of where this book goes now because I was expecting that sort of confrontation to come like later in the book, like closer to the middle or something like that. It's using that as sort of like a big climax or something like that. So I can't imagine what's going to come ahead. So yeah, overall I'm enjoying this book. Specifically the parts dealing with Anna. The side stuff with like Kitty and Levin, I could take it or leave it. Like I don't mind having it in the book, but I don't think it's, 
it's not really hitting me the same way you know what i mean so yeah i'm enjoying it so far but i'm going to keep going and keep making progress with this book if you hear any grinding going on in the background or those chewing noises it's parker um so it's been a while since i've done an update so i just finished part five yeah i just finished part five and so i figured i would come and do an update i've been like really tired with watching parker and so i just haven't had the energy to really uh record myself record anything in general like even like b-roll type of stuff anyways um yeah just finished part five and this book is so different than i thought it was going to be i thought it was gen genuinely just going to be like a basic forbidden love story sort of situation where Anna Karenina falls in love with Vronsky but they like can't truly be together because she's already married and all this stuff and then it like takes so many twists and turns like she ends up getting pregnant and then while in childbirth everyone thinks she's gonna die so her husband forgives Vronsky and Anna and like kind of falls back in love with her possibly that part I haven't completely figured out whether or how like true it is or how if it's just like he cares for her in a general sense but and then he like admits to or not admits to but agrees to like divorce her but then she says no and yet they still she still runs away with Vronsky but now she like misses her son and daughter because like by running away she's like cut off all contact with them and stuff like that and it's just it's wild <laughs> was not expecting so many twists and turns in this story. I still don't care at all about Levin and Kitty. Them sort of like falling in love again and getting married and then him being a complete idiot all the time about whether or not Kitty loves him. Just just not into it. Honestly not into it at all. I would probably skip all those chapters if I wasn't listening to the audiobook of it. This book is interesting and the parts with like Anna and her husband and Ronsky and all this stuff are my favorite parts but I can feel myself getting kind of tired <laughs> of this book. I was talking to someone and I was just like you know it's not that this is a bad book or anything like that but I'm kind of just ready for something else like I'm not like fully invested in this book I think partially because half of the storyline I don't care at all about. So yeah I'm gonna like try to power through as much as possible. Today is Tuesday December 21st and honestly the Christmas present I want to give myself is to be done with Anna Karenina. Not in a like this book is terrible and so I'm forcing myself to get through it but more in a this book is just really long and like if it was just the parts with Anna I, I probably would be enjoying this a lot more. I probably also would be done with the book by now. So yeah that's sort of my goal. I think is to just like power through the rest of this book as much as possible. I have three more parts left, six, seven, and eight. But I think the audiobook says I have like 10 hours left. <laughs> so let's see if I can get through as much as possible in the next couple of days. Hello, it is Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Although when you're watching this, it will be way past Christmas. I finished Anna Karenina. How very exciting. Anna Karenina has been an interesting experience, partially because I think my expectations of what this book was was incorrect because all anyone ever talks about in regards to Anna Karenina as a person who has tried very hard to avoid spoilers for the most of time or whatever, what is that sentence? I don't know, it's early, I'm tired, is that Anna Karenina is sort of like this forbidden love story and it ends with Anna throwing herself in front of a train. I never knew like the reasons or like what led to that point or anything along those lines. I just knew like those two details. But this book has so much more than that. Your mileage may vary on whether or not you actually enjoy those other elements. Personally, no. I get it, <laughs> but it's just not for me. So like anytime we were dealing with Anna or Vronsky or anything along those lines, I was like into the story. Anytime we're dealing with Levin and Kitty or any of the other like multitude of side characters that get introduced like Dolly and whatnot, my brain like checked out. It's Russian so like I know there's going to be some like theorizing and philosophy and discussions of religion and things like that but like I, I could just feel my brain just like checking out in those sections of the book. Did I love Anna Karenina? No. Did I enjoy Anna Karenina? Mostly yes. I do think it's wild that section 7 
So there's eight sections total in this book, and section seven ends with Anna committing suicide. And then section eight, like, treats it so terribly or, like, barely discusses it and all of this stuff. And then it, like, ends with Levin. And, like, I don't know. It, it, I didn't love the way it ended. It felt kind of like Harry Potter epilogue sort of vibes to me where, like, there was this extra section tacked on at the end and I wasn't wasn't feeling it, you know? But I did it. I read the book. It was an experience. Honestly, if I didn't have the audiobook, I don't know if I would have made it through the entire thing or I would have started skimming all of the sections that didn't have to do with Anna herself. I, I don't know if this is a controversial opinion. Honestly, I haven't looked on like Goodreads or anything to see what anyone says about this book because I kind of wanted to like assess it on my own. But I think the fact that it is so long and I only cared about literally half of the book um, makes it really difficult. <laughs> I feel like this ends up being my sort of reaction to almost every really long big book I tackle. Like I felt it with this book, I felt it with War and Peace, I felt it with Moby Dick. Like there's always like one storyline where I'm like yeah this is super compelling and I'm into it and there's always like some other storyline where I'm just like I, I don't care anything at all about this part of the book. But yeah I'm really glad that I read it though. I definitely don't regret my time with this book and I do still enjoy like Tolstoy as an author because I do think he creates like really compelling characters and stuff like that. It's just that when you're reading a book that's like, you know, 800 plus pages uh, and you don't care about 400 of those pages, it's 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 tough going. <laughs> but, you know, just want to say thanks for joining me on this adventure. Reading vlogs are really hard for me to do, so hopefully this wasn't too terrible of an experience with you or for you. Yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you've read Anna Karenina, your thoughts and feelings about them. And also, you know, maybe I'll do more reading vlogs in the future. I'm never gonna say never, but like I said, they're hard for me to do, but I'd be willing to attempt them if you moderately enjoyed this content. <laughs> so we'll see. Who knows what 2022 or beyond brings. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.